remember you telling me that you know when you stand out, you actually become an easy prey. Your ability to withhold what I want gives you power over me. We describe this state as being outward to gather. Because the, the outward, the other has control over my state. I literally stand out. That standing out makes me vulnerable. Literally, the more of a target I become. Because the more of my vulnerabilities are, in a sense, on display. There's another way of being, which is not about standing out and about contending. It's about standing in. The moment that I shift my intent from what I want from you to what I can, what, what I, how I can be helpful to you, then you lose your control over me, and I literally become, in a sense, inwardly gathered. The hook that you have on my being is disconnected. That inward gatheredness creates the conditions where the other then, if you like, becomes my ally and then sort of spontaneously gives me what I want. There's a collaborative way of being in the world where you allow the other to come to you and there's a competitive way of being in the world and you go out to go and get what you want. I think you have linked this thing of competitiveness uh, and cooperativeness, you know, with the concept of uh, divergence and convergence of human beings. Uh, can you explain that? If... Our fundamental engagement with each other is based on what each of us are trying to get from each other. That The nature of that engagement becomes competitive. And it's the nature of two people who are competing to repel each other because it's based on win-lose. So we can't occupy the same space. You know, there's, Now, if you consider that we've done that for the last 80,000 years, competing, 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 which is fine because the globe was a big place for 80,000 years. The problem is that it is a ball. We live in a completely um, kind of uh, convergent world. And the rules of intent that made us succeed in a divergent world are no longer going to succeed. Since ages, you know, there have, they have been two models of leadership. And one, you said, is the pharaonic model. And the other model, you know, you say that it's the Moses model. Can you explain the two models? The pharaonic model is really concerned with building a mausoleum for the eternal aggrandizement of the leader. Um, so the whole society is enslaved to the project of serving the ones who are in charge or the one that is in charge. The mosaic model is quite different. Not only was the aim of the work the free human being, the leader gets completely consumed in this project. And that tussle between these two different ways of looking at leadership has kind of been with us throughout the ages. Thank you, sir. Uh, one last question, Sheikh Sir, your take on control. When I deal with you in order to get something out of you, then I want to make, then basically the fundamental engagement is about control. Because I'm therefore using you as my means to produce something else. So in a sense, I need to contain you so that I get from you what I want. Nobody likes to be manipulated for an outcome. What I don't realize is I can really cultivate the conditions where you become my ally. The whole skill of being human is to learn how to artfully forego control. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.